Hi coders, my name is Shruti Shrivastava from Devi Learning Team. Today I wanted to show you how to make a pong game in Scratch. This is a type of game where you have a paddle and you are trying to stop a certain object from hitting the bottom of the screen. And yeah, by the end of this tutorial you'll be able to make your own game like this where you can design it however you want and I'll show you how to add multiple levels and more. So without any further delay, let's get started with the video. So first, let's pick the object that's going to be bouncing around in your game. You can just click this button that says choose a sprite option and click choose. And you can pick any object that you want. It could be a heart or a puffer fish or a star or really anything. Maybe I'll pick a ball and I'll do that. Oh, now let's select the backdrop too. You can hover over this button that says choose a backdrop and click choose and click absolutely anywhere that you would like your game to take place. I think I maybe I'll pick the boardwalk. Now let's make this object move. In the motion category you could drag out this block, move 10 steps and by clicking on that the object will move. Let's see what happens if we put this block inside a forever loop. So I'll go to the control category and drag out a forever loop. And now if I put the block in here, the ball just goes forward, you know, infinitely until it hits the wall and it gets stuck. So to make it not get stuck on the wall, you can go to the motion category and there's a block if on edge bounce. So if you put this block in the forever loop, the ball where it hits the wall, it realizes, oh, I hit an edge. So it bounces. So we have got it bouncing back and forth. But how can we make it bounce all over the screen so it's not just in the one line? In the motion category, there's this block point in direction and you can use it to set the direction that the spirit is pointing in. And right now the spirit is pointing in direction 90 and that's straight this way. Let's try putting in another number like 45. So now the ball is pointed at a 45 degree angle and now it's really bouncing around everywhere. And I'll put a when green flag clicked block on top so that we can make it start by clicking the green flag. You can also try putting a different number in here like 15. So now we have got our object bouncing around. Let's add a paddle. You can click on choose a sprite again and pick any object you want. It will be a little bit easier if that object has a flattish top of some kind but you can still pick anything. We also do have this paddle sprite that you can use and I'll use that one. So let's make it so that when the player moves the mouse left and right, the paddle moves with it. How can we make the paddle go to certain position between the left side of the screen and the right side of the screen? Well, in Scratch, you might already know, but X, this number represents how far a spirit is from the side of the screen to that side. And if you go to the motion category and drag out this block, set X, you can put it in number here and that will control where the spirit goes. So if you set X to 100, the spirit goes all over here. If you set it to zero, the spirit goes right into the middle. And if you set it to a negative number, like negative 100, the spirit goes over. Now we want the paddle to move left and right when the player moves the mouse left and right. And here's how we can do that. If you go to the sensing category, there's this block mouse X and this block will tell you what is the current X position of the player's mouse at the moment. So you can drag this block into the set X block and now this will set the X of the paddle to be wherever the X of the mouse is. To show you, let's put it in a forever loop. So I'll put that inside a forever loop and I'll put a when green flag clicked block on top so that we can make it start by clicking the green flag. And there you go. When the player moves the mouse left and right, the paddle moves left and right with it because we are always setting the X position of the paddle to be the X position of the mouse. Okay, nice. We have the object bouncing around and we can move the paddle, but right now the object just passes right through the paddle if we hit it. So let's make it actually bounce off the paddle. Here's how you can do that. Let's go to the control category and drag out an if block because we want the object to bounce if it hits the paddle. So how could we tell if the object hit the paddle? 
well in the sensing category there is this block that can check if one sprite is touching another sprite so we can drag this block and click and choose paddle from the menu and now if the object connects with the paddle what do we want it to do what code should we put in here well we want it to bounce before there was that if an edge block but there's no if on paddle bounce block but what is bouncing it's basically turning in the opposite direction and then moving in that direction so here's what you can do you can go to the motion category and pick out this turn block and have it turn 180 degree because 180 degree is half of a circle so if you turn that many degree you will go to the opposite direction from where you were going and then after it turns let's have it move a bit in this new direction it's going so you can drag out a move block maybe i'll have it move 15 steps so that the ball moves a little bit away from the paddle after it's been bounced now let's put a green flag block on top and see if it works okay so i hit the ball with the paddle but it did not bounce and here is why it's not working we need to put this if block inside a forever loop so that the ball is always checking every second. Did I hit the paddle? Did I hit the paddle? Because right now, if it doesn't have a forever loop around it, when the green flag is clicked, it checks one time. Am I hitting the paddle right now? Nope. Okay, I don't need to do this code anymore. So let's put this inside a forever loop. And now there we go. We can actually bounce the ball with the paddle. And one other little thing, I'll add, I'm going to put a wait 0.5 seconds block in here after it moves so that we'll have it to wait and let it move away from the paddle a bit. Also, if you want to add some randomness to the way it bounces, you can go to the operators category and drag out this block, pick random and instead of having the ball turns 180 degree every time, it could turn somewhere between 170 or 190 degree and now it will be a little different each time it hits the ball. Okay, so we can hit the ball with the paddle but nothing bad happens to us right now if we don't hit the ball and it just goes to the bottom of the screen. Let's make it so that the game ends if the ball hits the bottom of the screen. Here's how you can do that. We have this line sprite in the sprite library. So if you click and add that to your project, you can drag it to the bottom of the screen. Now let's make it so that if the ball ever touches this line that's under the paddle, then the game ends. Let's say if the line sprite makes connect with whatever object you have picked, so I'll pick the ball from the menu, have it stop all. There's this block in this control category and that will stop everything in your game. So let's put that in here. And just like before, we need to put a forever loop around this so that the line is always checking if connected with the object. And let's make this also start when the green flag is clicked and let's test it out for you. So, you know, if I'm playing the game and I don't manage to catch the ball, it stops the game. And there we go. You can restart it to try again. Now let me show you how to add multiple levels to your game. First, to do that, let's add, we can make a variable and variable in Scratch just lets you keep a track of certain number in your game. So we can name this variable score. And every time the player hits the ball, let's change the score by one so they get a point. There you go. Pretty nice. And when the green flag is clicked, Let's reset the score back to zero every time you start the game again. Now, here's how you can add another level. After you set the score to zero, you can use this block and wait until the score is greater than, let's say, five. So this block will, so this block will make the project wait until this thing happens before it does the next block you put under it. So this block will make the project Wait until this thing happens before it. To make it go to another level, get, let's go to the next backdrop. You can add another backdrop to be where the second level is. You can have the second level be anywhere you want. Now, when you get five point, it goes to the next backdrop to the next level. Also, let's add a block up here and switch the background to the first background we want it to start at. So I'll switch it to boardwalk and that will sort of set your beginning level and yeah there you go that's how you can make a pong game on scratch now there are so many things you can do 
with this game and you can add and yeah i'm really excited to see what kind of games you make on your scratch so don't forget to tell me in the comment section what was the best part about creating this game on scratch and until i meet you guys again Bye.